Hey, for this week's video, I wanted to go over hammerheads and how to use them in multiplayer. If this is your first time on this channel, I focus on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, then please subscribe. I was really surprised that there are so few videos on YouTube about this. And I actually use this maneuver quite a lot. So I'm kind of excited to share this one. Uh, video breaks down into three parts. One, the definition of what it is. Two, why it's important to have it in your tool belt. And three, we'll just kind of go over some examples and talk a little bit about how to beat it. The dictionary defines the hammerhead stall as a maneuver in which an airplane pulls up in a vertical climb until it almost stalls and then drops the nose in a wing over so that the direction of the flight is re reversed. Cool. Now, my definition is if you're getting chased and you climb up enough to where the opponent stalls and you come down on him. Basically, you're using your superior climb to extend and you know he can't keep up with your climb he stalled and you come down on him uh, here's my amazing ms paint drawing of it and if you look at this painting you can see it's not anything fancy basically you're pulling back on the stick you get to a certain altitude and speed and then you roll over and you come back down now if you have a better climb rate and a higher top speed than the guy chasing you then he shouldn't be able to catch you in this he's going to stall before you stall and if he stalls before you do then you roll over and you come down on him um, so instead of him being on you you're on him that's the whole idea in a nutshell and this is a useful tool to have in your inventory because if you are flying a plane that has uh, a good climb rate then you should be using that to your benefit uh, you know, you're not relying on that just to get to altitude quicker. You're using that to actually make reversals in fights. First example here, I had to deafen the in-game audio a little bit because um, the Discord audio is there. Um, I'm in a K4. I'm just cruising and patrolling, and I see something ahead of me, and we're going head-on. And I quickly realize that this is a Tempest, and I don't want to go head-on with him because he has four 20s, so I'm dipping below him. And this guy is already turning before we even completed our merge. And I point my nose up, full send it, and I'm climbing. K4s, I know, can climb better than the Tempest, so I know he can't keep up with me in this climb. I probably should have just kept climbing in a straight line. I, I kind of crank it into him a little bit, which was probably unnecessary. But this guy is like struggling to keep up. And when I reach the top of my climb, which I probably could have ended a little bit earlier, I didn't have to stall as much here. So that's, that's my bad. I roll over and I come down on him. And even though there's a cloud, IL-2 clouds are a little funny where you can see reflections through them a little bit, and especially propellers. And I come down on him and I put some 30s into him. What I should have done here is been more careful and climbed immediately away. What I did was look at him to see if he was actually dead or not. Now he kind of has a solution on me, but um, you know the climb right here kind of bails me out. Again, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just gonna climb away. And, um, you know, this is a pretty good example, um, especially what to do off of a merge when you know you have a better climb rate. Um, cranking into him or turning into him was probably unnecessary. I probably could have just kept it going in my direction, in my initial direction, but that's it. Next example, this is actually an interesting one. So it's a longer one, but I think it's a good one because we can talk about both perspectives. Um, seeing this Tempest, just shot someone down and he's heading away. Uh, I get one hit on his tail, and I turn into him to get on behind him. He turns to try to reverse, and I don't entertain it, throttle up, and I'm motoring away. Again, this is the same fight, uh, K4 versus the Tempest, and I know I'm going to be able to outclimb him. So unlike the last video, instead of turning into him, what I'm going to do is try to straighten out and get away from him because he's, he's a little bit closer than I would like because he has 420s. And I'm trying to extend from him, but also climb at the same time. And basically I'm building a difference in the energy situation while I'm getting more altitude than he is for the energy that we're spending. And I'm going to have more in the energy bank uh, when we stop this chase. So I'm getting basically to the end of my climb and I know he's going to be getting to the end of his and he can't keep the nose point up anymore and he has to bring it down. Um, and now I bring it around and now I'm in the dominant position now. So I'm coming down on him. He's trying to pick up speed and he's getting low. 
And in these scenarios, it's actually kind of interesting because the lower they get, like if they get low enough to the deck, like like a treetop level, it gets it gets pretty scary to try to dive onto them because you can't dive through them anymore because you'll hit the ground. Um, so I have to kind of saddle up and he does tempest things. Uh, he rolls it around and again, I don't entertain it. I'm going to go ahead and climb because I know he just blew a lot of E to do that. And I'm just going to climb above, above him. And again, this guy's staying low. If I dive on him from right here, I can't dive through him. So I need to be able to dive, shoot, and then pull off before I hit the ground. And what this guy does is he actually turns into me as I dive into him. And I don't want to get into a scenario where I'm going to merge with him in a dive and then it's going to be kind of scrappy. Like I want to stay in the dominant position. So I just pull up again, again, keeping my bank of energy. And he's basically kind of run out of options. He's turned into me. He didn't gain any altitude and I dive back in. And I got a 30 on his wing. I know he's going to be hurting now because I hit him twice now. And I start to pull up. Now in this scenario, what I should have done is turned more to the right to build more of a, a distance away from him. And he's shooting 20s at me. Um, so I should have turned to the right again to build a bigger gap. So that was my mistake. And he stalls out pretty quickly and I come back down on him. Now this guy's, like I said, he's really hurting. He's been hit twice. He has no E. And I just kind of dump into him and, it, and it's over from here. The takeaways from this are you can rinse and repeat this on the same target. Be careful if they are holding low over the ground, you can't dive through them. And be patient and wear them down. Hold a dominant position via your energy bank. Okay, there's one main lesson with this example. And that is what to do if you bound someone and as you start to climb away they immediately try to snipe you now in this scenario i'm flying a 109g i think or maybe this is an f4 maybe. and i see a yak and i'm i'm bouncing it and you know we're flying around 3k's nothing special going on so far but what I want you to focus on is after I hit him, watch his nose and watch what he does. So here's my balance, which is not a great one. I hit him. I look back and he starts to pull up into me. And what I do is I roll over to the left and I start to turn. And I, what I'm trying to do is point my wing at him. And that's important because if you're trying to shoot a flat target like this versus shooting something that looks like this, you can tell which one's easier to hit. Uh, it's a smaller surface here on the right, and that's what you want to try to do if they start to try to chase up after you, um, and they're close, and you need to try to minimize the risk of getting hit. That's what you do. Okay, this is the last one. This is a fail, but there's a lesson in here, and that is this is not a get, a, get out of jail free card. This is not gonna work all the time, and there's a couple different reasons for that. Sometimes people have really sweet aim, and they'll just catch you. Other times is you won't have enough speed to actually get away to build enough separation. And you need to be able to practice this and get a feel for the planes to understand when you can and can't get away with it. If you memorize all the planes and, the, and their climb rates, that really helps as a starting point. But you know, in this scenario, I pulled up and I can't get away from this guy and I'm already stalled out before he's stalled out and I'm flat against him and he has a big area to shoot and it's over. So that's it. I hope you guys found this helpful. I really enjoyed making this video. Please like and subscribe and please check out my other videos if you like this one. Thank you.